In this video, I will show you how to use ChatGPT to build a fully functional Next.js website, deploy it publicly on Vercel for free, and run it not only on your Windows PC, but also on your Linux SBCs like the Orange Pi 5 or the Raspberry Pi, and also in your Android devices, even using Visual Studio Code on them. Stick around to see how AI and multi-platform development come together in one project. Hi everyone, I'm Carlos and in today's video I will show you how to deploy a web page like this one for free. You can develop this web page on your computer using Windows, Mac or whatever, in your Linux SBCs like the Raspberry Pi or the Orange Pi, and even in your Android tablet or in your Android smartphone with Thermux. The project goal is to create a website that is versatile enough to run on multiple platforms, so we are going to use Next.js. That way, we are going to be able to develop the same web page in all your devices. I began by asking ChatGPT to generate the skeleton for a Next.js website. The AI provided me with a clean, production-ready code base. Here is a snippet of what it generates on the screen. To demonstrate how quickly you can iterate, I then ask, give me a navbar with two tabs. ChatGPT instantly generate a responsive navbar component. If you don't know what a navbar is, it's basically the upper part of a web page, where you usually see the different tabs. This way, we can ask ChatGPT to add buttons, tabs, images, or whatever we need to our web page, and it will give us the steps we need to do. To make this process a little easier, I have created a simple repository where I show you a very simple page that you can use as a template. The page has a mainland page and a few tabs. To clone it, all you have to do is run the following command on your PC. If you have never used Git before, I suggest you ask ChatGPT how to install and use it on your device. Let's start by installing Node.js and npm on Windows. Before you can run your project, you will need Node.js and npm. If you haven't installed them yet, here's how. Go to this page and download the LTS version for Windows. Just run the installer you have just downloaded and follow the on-screen instructions. It's basically next, next and next. Make sure to accept the default settings, which will install both Node.js and npm. Once it finishes, let's verify that everything is fine. Open a PowerShell and type the following commands. First verify the Node version and then the npm version. If you see a message like this, everything is fine. With Node.js and npm ready, now open your terminal and navigate to your project folder and run this command. npm install will install all the dependencies we need to run the project and npm run dev will run the project, so you can access it in localhost and the port number 3000. As you can see, we have our web page deployed locally. Later in the video, I will show you how to deploy it for free in Vercel to make it publicly accessible from anywhere. Now I will show you the exact same process in your Raspberry Pi. In Windows, we have to go to the official Node.js page to download it, but we are in Linux, so we can use the terminal. The first thing is update and upgrade your repository and your packages with this command. After that, we can install Node.js and npm with this simple command. Now we can clone the repo. This is the exact same command, git clone and my repository, and we are going to run also again npm install and npm run dev to execute the project. Now you can open your web browser and go to the localhost and the port 3000 where you will see your web page. On the other hand, if we are using Arch Linux, as is my case with the Orange Pi 5, where I'm using BreadOS, we will execute the commands that I will show you next. They are mostly the same as in the Raspberry Pi, but we are using here pacman instead of apt. So let's install node with sudo pacman s node.js and npm, then navigate to your project folder and run the same commands, npm install and npm run dev, after that, you can open the web browser and go again to localhost and the port 3000. Let me know in the comments if you are using an SBC and which operating system you are using. Now let's shine a spotlight on Android, a platform that surprises many developers. With Thermux, you can run a full Linux environment on your phone or on your tablet, and with Thermux X11 plus Visual Studio Code, you get a near desktop coding experience. This is what I experienced when I connect the Lenovo Y700 model 2022 to an external monitor and a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. This way I practically have a much more compact laptop. If you want to see more about how I use this tablet, I recommend you visiting the review I have in the channel. Also I leave links in the description of the video if you want to look at Aliexpress some of the accessories you have seen. So let me show you how to set up everything on Android. I already have a lot of videos in the channel about Thermux, so I recommend you watching them. 
but I will do a quick tutorial. First, I recommend you opening my repository. Here you have a lot of information about Thermux. Then we are going to open the official Thermux repository and we are going to download the last release. Install the APK and you are good to go. Now let's do the same with Thermux X11. This is the application we will use to see the desktop environment, but you can use a VNC connection if you prefer. For now, let's go to the official Thermux X11 repository and download the last available APK. Once we have both Thermux and Thermux X11 applications installed, we are going to open just Thermux for now. Let's copy and paste the commands I have in the first step section on my repository. Copy and paste them into Thermux. In case you are prompted with something, just type Y and hit enter. Now a quick tip. If you see the wrong font, like it is a bit blurry as I have the problem, let's fix it by installing a different one. To do this, go to the Thermux native section and go to the customization part. We need to copy and paste this command to install a tool called getnf. After that, we will execute that command getnf and we will choose one of the fonts. In my case, I will choose the number 26 called hack. Then we select the font style, in my case regular, and we have solved the problem. Ok, let's continue by installing Node.js inside Thermux. By executing the command apt install Node.js. With that, we will have Node.js and npm. After that, you have to install git and we are going to clone my example repository. Move to that folder, execute npm install and npm run dev. Now if you open a web browser on your Android device or inside the Thermux environment, you will see in localhost and the port 3000 the web page hosted locally on your Android device. But let me show you how to install Visual Studio Code and a desktop environment to improve the coding experience. For the desktop environment part, it's very easy. Open my repository, go to the Thermus Native Desktop section, download script and copy this command, paste it into Thermus and execute the script. You will see that the Thermus X11 application is open and a desktop environment is loaded. To finish, let's install Visual Studio Code. Go to the how to install apps inside Thermos native desktop section and just copy and paste this command. When the command finishes, you can now go to the menu and open Visual Studio Code. Congratulations, you have a Linux coding environment in your Android device. I recommend you, if you are interested, checking all my other videos so you can know how to customize, how to install other applications, how to install Chromium or Firefox, etc. If you have used Android to code, please drop your experience or questions in the comments. I would love to hear how it goes for you. And now, to finish with the video, the exciting part. How to deploy your web page in Vercel for free, making your site public to anyone. The process is very simple. You will need a GitHub account and upload your repository to your GitHub. If you have any doubt, you can leave a comment or ask ChatGPT. Once you have your GitHub account, let's go to the official Vercel page, click on sign up and use your GitHub account to sign up. After that, let's click on new project import git repository and select continue with github. You have to authorize Vercel to access your github repositories. Now select your github repository and click on import. Vercel will automatically detect as a Next.js app and apply the default settings. You don't have to modify anything at all. So just click on deploy. The process takes less than a minute and once finished, Vercel with you a new URL. Just click on the URL and now your site is live on the internet. So as a summary, we have used ChatGPT to generate an XJS project that can be run on a lot of different devices, a Windows PC, a Linux single board computer like the Raspberry Pi or the Orange Pi, and even on Android devices using Tenmux and Visual Studio Code. If you enjoyed this video, please try cloning the repository from my GitHub and follow along on your device of choice. Also, check out my previous Tenmux setup videos for more on running Linux on Android and let me know which platform you are most excited about in the comments below. Your feedback and questions mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching and happy coding. See you in the next video.